Hey, it's Namato. So I did a video on compression and different compression techniques something like four months ago. And I ended that video talking about how I don't have any analog compressors to show you guys. Or at least I didn't. I bought one. So here we go. All right, so a little backstory before we get into this. Um, I was working on a couple of the last songs for the latest album that I just finished up. More on that at the end of the video. And uh, this little guy, the Wes Audio Dion Bus Compressor, showed up at my door. For probably the better part of the last three years, the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor, the digital emulation version of it from Universal Audio, that has lived at the top of my mastering chain for just about every song that I've produced. And for a while now, I've had this empty analog 500 series rack just staring at me in my studio just kind of waiting for waiting for some analog equipment and so I finally decided to pull the trigger on this compressor one of the other motivations that I had for making this video is it seems like the majority of the time that I look for analog equipment and kind of how it sounds uh, with a video online most of the time the music that they're using to test this equipment is like in the classic rock genre or just it's never electronic music it seems like I don't know about you but I would much rather get um, kind of an a B comparison uh, or an example of what it sounds like with a similar genre to, to what I'm producing you know what I mean big disclaimer here uh, this is not exactly an apples to apples comparison just simply looking at the differences between digital versus analog compression you know more real-world application I just simply wanted to see if I enjoy or if I can pick up on a difference in the sound quality of analog compression versus kind of the sound quality that I've been getting out of the digital emulation version of the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. So we'll run through <clears throat> so we will do so which way which way so we'll run through some of the key features my favorite things about this compressor and then I'll give you guys some audio examples to see if you guys can pick up on the differences. Since I mentioned it there at the start of the video I will uh, link that compression video down below if you want to kind of brush up on your knowledge of compression and uh, different techniques before jumping into kind of this audio comparison. Okay, so we have the West Audio Dion bus compressor. It's modeled after the classic VCA bus compressor. You guys probably recognize the SSL G series bus compressors. There are a lot of different emulations out there from digital and analog options. This one from West Audio is a little bit unique in the sense that it has this USB cable link. What this allows you to do is run a digital plugin in your DAW and control all of the parameters that you see on the compressor with a plug-in. Now keep in mind all the circuitry in this compressor is analog. There's nothing digital about it. It just gives you the control over all of those parameters so that as you're working on a mix in your studio that you can stay kind of right in the in the sweet spot of your monitors instead of being you know positioned elsewhere in your studio trying to make adjustments to this. So you do have a lot of the usual parameters parameters of a compressor on here. It is nice that they include a dry wet mix knob for kind of some parallel compression. Um, and then one of my favorite settings on here is this THD option down here. Basically this is kind of added coloration to your sound. Um, and so you have a medium and high setting or you can leave it off. And then it is also a nice option that you have the sidechain filter over here. This is great for when you are putting this on your mix box especially like on drums and low end that you can kind of omit certain frequencies to drive this compressor a little bit more on um, the majority of instruments in your track. It is also nice that you have basically two channels here so I can make a bunch of settings on channel A and then if I want to just kind of test how it sounds differently I can run just a slight different or, or variation over on channel B and then kind of flip between the two and then obviously you can bypass them as well as you're kind of exploring different sounds of your mix. 
So let's give this thing a listen. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a few different audio examples here. The first one, I have soloed the drums on one of these newest tracks, and we're just gonna kinda listen to what the compressor sounds um, versus just the dry uh, drums kind of on their own. And then I'm also going to play you guys a couple different masters that I've done of two of these tracks. Hold up. If you're watching this through your phone and I get a dislike from you, just it's over. No, seriously, the differences here are very, very subtle, and so I can't recommend enough that you throw on at least a, a pair of headphones just to see if you can kind of pick up on these subtle differences. Let's go. Could you hear the difference? Now look, I'm uh, I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say that, you know, analog compression is just like. It's a very subtle difference. And uh, to my ears, what, what I'm noticing is it, it sounds like with the uh, West Audio Dion compressor, there's just like this little extra weight uh, to, the, to the low end of the track. And then it kind of seems to just slightly round off some of the transients and kind of glue things together. Um, that extra weight and um, that character, that warmth, if you will, um, it's, it's gotta be because of that THD uh, setting on the compressor, engaging that that colorization um, it's something that I think that that warm quality to the sound you get a little bit better with analog equipment in comparison to these digital emulation plug-in versions of the of the actual you know hardware unit so at this price point do I think that this analog compressor is worth it well, that's totally going to depend on you guys and kind of where you're at in your in your music production uh, process, your studio, what other equipment that you have. If you don't already have a lot of, let's say, digital um, plug-in mixing and mastering tools at your disposal, you're probably better off investing in that stuff first. Um, a lot of the plugins nowadays, even though they're digital, they do a great job and can kind of take your mix much further than just, say, throwing all this money at one end analog compressor or you know you could you could buy a bunch of Eurorack modules for the same price and um, have more tools at your disposal for just the music creation process now for me in my studio since I've been using a lot of these different plugins for multiple years now I've been looking for something that um, yeah it can really kind of just add that little bit of 
of coloration and, and variation to the quality of the music that you're making. So Wes Audio, it's a great sounding compressor to my ears. I'm happy that I added it to my studio and I'm looking forward to doing more mixes with it here in the future. So the new album, Nideria Volume 2, will be released uh, June 5th. So these Nideria albums, they're just basically instrumental compilations that I create um, with a primary focus in Eurorack synthesizers. Probably something like 80 to 90 percent of the songs are written entirely with the Eurorack modular synth that you see behind me. And a lot of these tracks that are being released, you guys have already kind of watched me produce uh, with those like song from a skiff videos and other videos that I've done on this channel. I think it's kind of cool that through the process of making these YouTube videos, it's, uh, it's kind of allowed me to focus on music production simultaneously with hopefully, you know, providing some benefit to you guys, whether it's just uh, information based or entertainment, wh whatever you guys get out of these videos. So thank you guys, it means a lot. June 5th, nine songs. I will post the link to the album down below when it is available for pre-order here. So that'll do it for me, this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and I will see you guys very soon. That probably didn't work, so...